Lecture 1. In this lecture, we will talk about events and probability. But before that, we will define what is meant by an experiment and what is a sample space. And after that, we will talk about events and probability. And finally, we will introduce a very useful bound called union bound. So let's begin. So what is an experiment? An experiment in math is a process to produce an outcome. And in particular, in this course, we are interested in random experiments. So a random experiment is an experiment such that the outcome is not known until the process is done. So for instance, there are two examples here. The first experiment here is, let's say we are going to flip a coin two times. Without performing this experiment, we do not know what will be the outcome. And similarly, we have another experiment. This time, we are going to flip a coin again and again until head comes up. And what is sample space? So sample space is merely the set of all outcomes of an experiment. So let us recall our first experiment is to flip a coin two times. So in this case, the sample space is we could have head and then head. So the first time is we have a head and then we have a head for the second time. And then it could be head and tail. So that the first flip is a head and the second flip is a tail. And then we could have th, tail followed by head. And then we could also have tail, tail. So two times we all both have tails. And how about the second experiment? So in the second experiment, we are going to flip a coin until head comes up. So we can represent the sample space as it could be like H, we, we get the head immediately, or we get tail, and then after that we get head, or tail, tail, head, or tail, 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 head, and so on and so forth. Now this is just, okay, notice that there are many different ways to write down the sample space. So this is a case where we are writing down what you see in each flip. But then, equivalently, you may also write the sample space as something like 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. It represents the total number of flips that we have. Okay, so H and 1, they represent the same thing. TH and 2, they represent the same thing, and so on and so forth. And now, what is meant by events? Okay. Events is a subset of the sample space. So for instance, uh, in our first experiment, when we flip a coin two times, we may define a certain event as same, so that it means that we observe the same outcomes in the two flips. So in this case, same will be the subset that contains HH and TT. We may also define an event called diff, which means that the two flips are of different uh, values. So it, it, will, it will be this for this event diff, it contains this, the two outcomes HT and TH. And we may also define an event called first is head. So it indicates that the first flip is a head. So in such a case, the, the event will be the subset that contains HH and HT. Now, once we have defined events, then we can talk about probability. So probability is a function, let us say we denote this by PR, and this function is to measure the chance for each event to occur. And then we require this function PR for some, for some uh, conventional reason. It, it has to satisfy some properties. We will see that it would need to satisfy three properties in the, uh, in the next page. So the first one is, no matter what event you are talking about, the chance of the event the, is measured by probability of E, PRE, and then it is always a value greater than or equal to zero, a real number greater than or equal to zero. And for the sample space, we use omega to represent the sample space. Yeah, so because sample space is the set of all outcomes, so we use big omega. Omega has the same 
at first and sound like o o o as outcomes. So we use a big omega to represent the sample space. So the sample space itself is also an event, right? So for this case, the probability of the sample space p r omega is defined to be equal to one. And finally, it has to satisfy the third property. So here, for any disjoint events E and F, probability of E union F has to be equal to the probability of E plus the probability of F. Okay, so let's see an example so to, to get our understanding. So in this example, let us consider we are rolling a fair die once. So in this case, the probability of 1. So here, 1 means the event that uh, 1 comes up. We will see that using our usual understanding, the chance of 1 coming out is equal to 1 over 6. But actually, we can explain why this is true. The reason is that we know that the probability of the sample space is equal to 1. This is by definition. So, the sample space itself can be can be seen as the union of the disjoint events 1 comes up, 2 comes up, 3 comes up, and so on and so forth. So in that case, probability of 1 plus probability of 2 and so on and so forth up to probability of 6, it represents the probability of the sample space. And then, by definition, it is equal to 1. On the other hand, because the die is a fair die, it means that the chance of getting each outcome has to be the same. So we know that probability of 1 is equal to probability of 2, and so on and so forth, and it is equal to probability of 6. So using these two formulas, we solve it, and then we will see that the chance of 1 coming up has to be equal to 1 over 6. So this actually agrees with our daily understanding of, of, of probability. And now, we want to introduce a very useful bound called union bound. So let's take a look of this so we can, we can state this as a certain theorem. Okay. So here, we, we, we look at two events E and F. We say that the probability of E union F is always smaller than or equal to the probability of E plus the probability of F. Now, notice that this is a theorem. This is some results that we have not talked about before. Please don't confuse this with the probability of, uh, with, the, with the property of probability on the previous page. So if we look at some, let's go back a little bit. So we have this one. This looks very similar to what we are seeing. And then it is also talking about events E and F. But here, there is a word disjoint. So in the probability uh, uh, definition, the property here requires we are talking about disjoint events. So for disjoint events, we require it to be equal. But now, in the current situation, for this union bound theorem, the events E and F, they are not required to be disjoint. And then we want to show that for any general events E and F, this has to hold. Now the proof is actually very simple. Let us take a look of the Venn diagram. So we use this big rectangular box to represent the sample space omega. And then E is this, this part represents the subset of, 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 of a certain subset of the sample space and F is another subset of the sample space. Now, what is the probability of E union F? So the probability of E union F is actually we consider all the outcomes within this region, E union F. So we consider all the outcomes. And the corresponding probability of E union F is actually the sum of the probability of this outcome plus this one and so on and so forth. We add up all the things here. On the other hand, Probability of E will be the summation of all the probabilities of, of the outcomes within this part, and the probability of F is the summation of the probability of outcomes in this part. 
So if we simply add these two probability together, we will see that this part, all the outcomes in the overlapping region here, is counted twice. So in such a case, we have more probabilities counted, and we recall that for each probability, it has to be greater than or equal to zero. So that's why, on the left hand side, we count each outcome only once within the, the, the region of e union F. But here, some of the outcomes, so we count the, uh, the outcomes in the region of E plus the outcome in the region of F, so that the overlapping part is double counted. So in such a case, this total sum will be more than that. Okay, maybe equal, okay, but it is at least as many as that of the left hand side. And then we will see that in order to have equality, in order to have this as an equality, which means that there is nothing to be double counted. And in this case, this means that E and F, they are disjoint events. Okay, so that's all for, for, for lecture one. Thank you.